Six pound oh. ball. Very good. Six pound cannonball right here. So that's how these normally got their names. If you see like six pound or twelve pound, or obviously they're very large, but they get the name from the size of cannonball that they're shooting out. This is a solid shot right here. So it's just solid iron right here. This has a range of about a half a mile to a mile. So about half a mile, you're going to be very likely to hit something a mile. is about the max range. So you might have to fire a few times in order to be able to hit something. So this one go all the way across the straits, but it would certainly depend on the port here from any closer ships coming in. If you want to defend yourself against uh, an enemy that was a little closer, you would probably be using canisters. So this is good for your long range, good against large bodies of troops or ships or that. But if you want to get in close, so 100 yards about from here to the blockhouse behind you right over there on the corner, you would be firing canister. Canister is basically a lot of iron balls in a bag or a tin, and you load in the cannon right here, and it makes it a giant shotgun. So you can get a lot, uh, a lot more space to cover right there when you fire it. So that works when you have troops maybe attacking the port here. Now the cannons here we're not using. You want to stay here by the cannon. Folks are going to be doing a cannon firing right here if you're interested. All right. Um, the cannons here at Fort Mitchell Mackinac were not used in battle, though. There was a battle here in 1763. However, there wasn't even enough time to fire muskets, let alone the cannons, so they weren't really used. However, they were used in ceremonial occasions. So if you have a visiting chief coming in, a new commanding officer, or on June the 4th, that would be King George III's birthday. So there would be celebrations that day, and probably a firing off of the cannon. And I'm sure there's some practice rounds going off as well. But really nothing too serious here at the port. Normally these guns should have a crew of 15 men went out on, went out on the field and in camp on, uh, on campaign. However, here at Fort Mitchell and Mackinac, there's only about two, maybe five uh, artillerists here who are fully devoted to the cannons at any one time. So it kind of varied sometimes in the 1770s here. So these crews would be very small. Um, and actually a couple of them died once they got here. Some, so they would be bring them in all this way, and some were actually killed because of not using proper safety techniques here. So that's kind of one thing we'll be emphasizing during the cannon firing here. Although sometimes uh, I'm sure a couple of infantry men uh, would be brought in to man the guns, since there's only two guys who knew how to fire the cannons, but probably normally for everything that was happening here, it was just the two artillerists working on anything, or the small group. These guns have about, you can fire about Three shots aimed per minute out of the cannon right here. Although, if you do not use any safety techniques and you weren't aiming, you could probably get 10 or more rounds off per minute. Yeah. Now we're going to be going at a much slower rate. We only fire once every, uh, once every yeah, hour here. Look at that ball. Really. Nice. I'll be helping out with the gun crew here. I'm actually covering up the vent so when anything goes on, make sure that uh, we try to create a vacuum and make sure no sparks get up in the vent so when they're loading, sets off anything. Anyway, before that, we have what's known as a gun worm right here. What he's going to do is he's going to go in the barrel and he's going to remove any debris at the bottom from the charge uh, from the previous shot. So that helps clean out the cannon and it could even be embers or sparks that are left in that, that old debris. So that's uh, kind of a two-fold right there. A wet sponge. I'm creating, again, I'm creating a vacuum and that makes it basically impossible for any embers to be hiding in the cannon. Also, Using uh, quills or little tins of 
gunpowder that can stick directly in there without having to measure everything. But since we're doing a much slower rate of fire than what you'd have in battle, we're just using the uh, powder. We didn't have matches or lighters back in the 1700s, so we're using flint and steel to create sparks. And those sparks will hopefully land on the char cloth right here. Turn it down, because it will be fairly loud. 